Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our short online service this morning. As you know, we aren't able to meet in church at the moment, given the current circumstances that we're in. However, we're still able to gather together online in this sacred place to spend time with our Lord, listening to him, speaking to him and praising him as well. And this morning we'll also share in spiritual Holy Communion. The term spiritual communion has been used historically to describe the means of grace by which a person, prevented for some serious reason from sharing in a celebration of the Eucharist, nonetheless shares in the communion of Jesus. So during this service, while we're unable to take the bread and the wine alongside our brothers and sisters at Christchurch Walshaw, we still have an opportunity to give thanks for our communion with Jesus. The Book of Common Prayer instructs us that if we offer ourselves in penitence and faith, giving thanks for the redemption won by Christ crucified, we may truly eat and drink of the body and blood of our Saviour Christ, even though we can't receive the sacrament physically ourselves. Making spiritual communion fulfils the duty, and it is a duty, of receiving Holy Communion regularly. But as we begin our worship this morning, we are called to recognise God's authority and to submit to it in every area of our lives. So let us invite God to direct our thinking and our prayers. Let us give God the highest place in our lives and let us worship the living God. And let's do that by saying together these words. Almighty God, we recognise that all authority in heaven and on earth belongs to you. We pray that you, that you draw near to us today to impart your truth and show us your way. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as we continue now, we're going to have a song, one that you can listen to or read the words if you like, or you can even join in with it at home, either on your own or with those that you're with. And the song this morning that we're starting off with is 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy. Sin like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Day when my 
strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still, my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy. So as we continue now, let's pray together with the collect for this fourth Sunday of Epiphany, the last Sunday of Epiphany. Let's say these words together. God of heaven, you send the gospel to the ends of the earth and you are messengers to every nation. Send your Holy Spirit to transform us by the good news of everlasting life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before we have our, our readings from the Bible this morning, Lord Jesus, may our hearts burn within us as we listen to you and as you open the scriptures to us. Amen. And Seth's going to read to us now, first of all, from the Old Testament, and then we're going to be having a video from Mark's Gospel for our second reading straight after that. Hello, um, today's reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy um, in chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. The Lord said to me, What they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words, that the prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. This is the word of the Lord. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching? And with authority? He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. 
So Frank's going to share with us now a reflection on one of our readings. Thanks, Frank. The first verse of Mark's Gospel says, The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. After his baptism by John the Baptist in the River Jordan, Jesus was sent into the wilderness for 40 days. And after his time in the wilderness, Jesus started travelling about, talking to the people about the good news, and he also called his first disciples to follow him. Our reading this morning, Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28, continues his journey. They went to Capernaum, where on the Sabbath they went to the synagogue, where Jesus started to teach. The people were amazed at what he was saying. They had never heard anything like this teaching before. Who is this man who speaks with such great authority? They were used to the rabbis and scribes coming in and talking about this and that and citing other rabbis and scribes to give them more authority in what they were saying. But never before had they heard anybody come in and proclaim a teaching without relying on anybody else's authority. He is the teacher of teachers come to proclaim the good news of eternal life. No mere teacher could speak with the great authority which Jesus speaks. The people were asking themselves, who is this man who speaks with such great authority? And Mark writes, and immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. What have you come to do with us? The people were told by Jesus, but it fell on deaf ears. They would not realise the true answer to this question until Jesus dies on the cross for their sins and he rises again. They wanted him to rule the land, overthrow the government. They missed his purpose. Do you miss his purpose? How do you miss the true purpose of Jesus? Is it because you refuse to see that he comes to die for you? Or are you only looking for him as a moral teacher? Is it because when you read his word, you are looking for a life principle to live by, a way to fix your life? People miss who he really is. They see him just as a person to go to when they need their illnesses healed, or maybe some emotional support. Jesus does all these things and much more, but they sell him short. Are you selling Jesus short? Jesus is not just a genie in a bottle to be called on whenever you need a little help. He is the Messiah of the Holy One of Israel and he came to set you free. What did he come to do with us? The man with the unclean spirit speaks. He came to set you free from the consequences of your sin. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in conclusion, who is this man? Who is this man who speaks with great authority? He is your Lord and Saviour. Thanks for that, Frank. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for Jesus, the one who speaks with words of authority, the one who came to set us free. Help us, to see, help us to see him more clearly with our hearts and minds. And through your Holy Spirit, help us to respond to his words of life. We ask these things in his name. Amen. And we'll continue in prayer now. And when I say, Holy God, please can you respond with, may your will be done. Holy God, may your will be done. Holy God, great Spirit of all, may the whole church honour and glorify your name in daily lives, private prayer and public worship. Holy God, may your will be done. May the whole world resound with your truth, activate your compassion and be soaked in your peace. Holy God, may your will be done. May all homes and households make plenty of room for kindness and forgiveness, clear the clutter of discontent and make us more thankful. Holy God, may your will be done. And may all who ache, 
with sadness or physical pain, be comforted and cherished, knowing your love for them. Holy God, may your will be done. And as we step into each new day, may our thanks and praise give joy to you, our living God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we continue, let's pray together with the Lord's Prayer, the traditional version of the words that Jesus taught us to pray with. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says in the book of Revelation in chapter 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. And in John chapter 6, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So confident in these truths, Let's prepare to participate in spiritual communion and to meet with Jesus by each of us making our confession to God, saying these words together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you and against my neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through my own deliberate fault. I am truly sorry and repent of all my sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for me, forgive me all that is past and grant that I may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And if you've said this confession with a sincere heart, if you've really meant those words with all your heart, may the God of love forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's give thanks now for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus and ask him to be with us now. Let's say these words together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And Lord Jesus, as the hem of your garment touched in faith, healed the woman who could not touch your body, so may the soul of your servants be healed. For though we cannot receive you in the sacrament side by side, sharing in the breaking of bread and one cup, we can, through this offering of my prayer, receive you into our hearts. Amen. Just want to share some notices with you. And first of all, thank you so much to everyone who joined us on last Tuesday evening for 10 Minutes with God. Uh, it was the first time we, we've done it and we've got a really good turnout for people joining us for 10 minutes of prayer online uh, and we're going to be doing the same again this week at 7.30 p.m. Uh, with links through our website as well as on Facebook and Twitter as well uh, and it's also on our YouTube channel. This coming Tuesday Alan will be leading us for our 10 minutes of prayer as we pray for our community, our nation, the world and for those that we love and care about as well. So please do join us if you're able to do for 10 minutes. Uh, and if you're unable to join us at 7.30, then don't worry too much because you'll be able to catch up after that time too. But thank you again, everyone who joined us last week. Next Wednesday morning uh, at 10 o'clock, we have Wiggle Worship for young families that are worshipping at home with little ones. 
Steph and Wiggle will be sharing uh, the second part of Noah's story, which is called Zoo and the Rain. And uh, it, Bill, Steph and Wiggle will also be helping us to have some fun too. You can join us through uh, our Facebook page and Twitter pages as well, as well as through our website as well on uh, christchurchwalshaw.co.uk slash toddler worship. Uh, again, very easy to find on our website. Uh, this fortnight's uh, Going Deeper video, we've got a new uh, Going Deeper video this fortnight, uh, and it's from Bishop Michael Nazir Ali, uh, and the, the theme is God's Church. And it's a 32 minute video uh, which was recorded at the GAFCON conference in Jerusalem in 2018. GAFCON is the Global Anglican Futures Conference. And uh, Bishop Michael, in case you don't know him, he was the 106th Bishop of Rochester in the Church of England from 1994 to 2009. And he's now the director of the Oxford Centre for Training, Research, Advocacy and Dialogue. And he's been the, been the visiting bishop of the Anglican Diocese of South Carolina in the United States since 2010. He's also a dual citizen, just interestingly, uh, of Pakistan and Britain as well. And in this talk, Bishop Michael thinks about how the church, we, can engage with new knowledge. I suppose it's, it's new knowledge and the role that scripture's got in helping us to do that. And he also explores something about church unity as well. And in this time when scripture can be ignored by so many people, including so many people in the church, in this time when scripture can be abused by so many people as well, this uh, 32 minute video is very timely teaching. I really encourage you to go and watch it. You can find it again through our website uh, on Going Deeper. And uh, uh, yeah, and there's also a link on my email from Friday as well. And uh, as you know, our book of the month uh, at the moment is Sitting at the Feet of Rabbi Jesus, Paul's recommendation to us for this month, uh, which explores who Jesus is through Jewish eyes, through the eyes of the writers of the New Testament. And I'd really, again, encourage you, it opens up the Bible and Jesus in a whole new way when we look through the lens of those who are writing the New Testament. Uh, you can find out, as I say, more about that on our website, uh, on the Going Deeper. Uh, and I just, if you're interested in sharing with me, um, if you've read a good book lately that you think might help us all in our walks with Jesus, it might help us all become deeper in our faith, it might teach us all something, uh, then please do let me know and perhaps we can share that for one of our books of the month uh, coming up later on this year. Uh, just give me a ring and just say, what do you think, Steve? And we'll have a quick chat about it. Uh, and that will be brilliant. It, it's something we can share in together. It becomes a big boot club, really, doesn't it? Yeah, so do get in touch about that. And then finally, I just want to encourage you all in these really difficult times to continue to support one another practically and in prayer. And keep all those people who are on the front line, teachers, health staff, chemists, those working at the vaccination places, uh, shop workers, delivery people, Keep all those people in your prayers as well, as well as those who are poorly and those who are grieving. And a practical thing that we could all do this next week, why don't you just pick up the telephone and ring somebody that you know, but you've not spoken to for a while. See how they are, ask if there's anything you can do for them uh, practically, or ask them if you can pray for them. Uh, whenever I've done that, no one's ever turned around to me and said, no, I do not want you to pray for me. So. Uh, just pick up the phone, just be a friend to somebody this week. Uh, you never know, it might be God working through you, reaching out to that person. So I'd encourage you that. And then of course, all of you, please do feel free to contact me if you want uh, someone to pray for you or uh, for someone you, you know who wants uh, you want uh, me to pray for as well. And of course, if you just want to chat, you're just feeling lonely, you can always just give me a ring as well. In a moment, we'll have our final song, which is How Great Thou Art, uh, which you might want to, again, want to join in with, or you might want to just listen to the words. But as we come to a close now, loving God, be with all your people in these days when we cannot gather in person, and help us to hope in that great day when we will all gather at your heavenly banquet. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and care about this day and always. Amen. So we'll see you next week, same time next week, 11 o'clock.
through the usual channels. Uh, I hope you have a great week everyone and we'll leave you now with how great thou art. Bye. My soul, my Savior, God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul. Sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my sin. Shall come.